Next up, we are going to address a very important question that so many of us keep asking ourselves in different contexts, not only managerial roles, and the question is, have I done enough? To paraphrase this, have I done the right things? Managerial overthinking and sense of guilt in the face of employee crises. Here to talk to you about it, please welcome Małgorzata Wypy. Hello, Małgorzata. Hello, welcome everyone. It's good to see you, even though we have a challenging topic to address today. Yes, good to see you too. Małgorzata, it's important that we establish a little bit more background first, I suppose. Uh, what is it you do uh, around this topic? Uh, you're obviously the CEO of Mental Health Center. Can you tell us more about it, just a few words of background, and why does this topic matter to you especially? You know, uh, what, what I do on an everyday basis is, is that I help companies to cope with mental health crises of employees. So it's a kind of white topic and why it's important because we saw that uh, when we look at well-being strategies, they include people who are in fact kind of healthy and uh, highly functioning. So those, this offer uh, had a gap and we thought that those who are in mental crisis, for example, in, in depression or other crises that might come from critical incidents in life can be excluded because those people usually do not have power, energy, motivation to socialize. So uh, we thought that there's a huge need to talk uh, about inclusion of those people who might uh, go through those types of crises into well-being strategies. So Mental Health Center is educating employees, is, uh, is offering trainings for manager how to act in, uh, in those difficult situations, how to support employee in a short and long term. And we also offer uh, our support when something like this happens. So, so we just, uh, on very systematic level, support employees and managers and HR business partner, partners how to coordinate this, uh, this support. So this is what we do on an everyday basis. And as I said, uh, I thought that it's a huge gap and a huge need to talk openly about this subject. And now, uh, during the pandemic time, this, uh, this subject became really hot. Um, really hot in the sense that we, we talk about different aspects and angles of it. Another project we'll talk about at this conference is Mental Health Helpline. Uh, Tadeusz will be talking more about it, but give, looking at just the sheer statistics of engagement and interest in this area of mental health, this is enough to tell us that it's, it's, it's a big, sometimes huge challenge for many companies. Uh, Małgorzata, tell me, what do we mean when we refer to managerial overthinking? Mm -hmm. What context could we establish for that? Yes, managers uh, have problems or discomfort or even guilt, and they overthink because of this when, uh, when they have dilemmas. And very first dilemma is whether I should approach the employee when I recognize any problems or when I hear the gossip that someone may, may go through some kind of crisis. So they have this dilemma whether I should ask how are you doing or how I should do that or wouldn't be a crossing the limits, those intimacy limits with employees. So this is the, the first dilemma they, they have. Many times this dilemma comes from their own lack of competences, how I should do that. Maybe they, they know that they should, but they don't have tools. They don't know how to provide a supportive talk, for example. And at the end, they, they are not sure whether this ideas that they have, how can, can they do that, uh, fit really with the needs of the employee. So first dilemma is uh, whether I'm crossing the this intimacy limits. Um, another dilemma is where, whether i done enough. So sometimes they do something, they do support, but uh, it can lead to a situation that employee might be overwhelmed by support. For example, when manager gets the information that employee has uh, depression and uh, they react with uh, lowering expectations, but they don't uh, settle any agreement with the employee. Yeah? So it's also crossing the limit when they do too much for, for those employees. Or sometimes those situations may come from this dilemma 
that they know, for example, that employee goes through grieving process after losing a family member. And it's kind of very sensitive subject. Not everyone knows how to react. So they know about this situation. They were informed by the employee, but they don't know whether they should ask on everyday basis. How are you doing? What do you feel right now? How are you coping? And etc. So this is another example of, of those situations that may lead to overthinking. Or uh, even if they did have some conversation with, in, uh, with the employee, they settled a plan, they offered lowering expectations, or they offered more elastic time hours, whatever they, they did, they don't know whether it's, it's good enough or whether it's everything uh, I could offer in this situation. So they take this problem home and they overthink about it. Yeah? So the, the private issue of an employee may became the, the issue for the manager. So they are not present at home because they, they try to figure out what else I can offer in this situation. And this, this may come from this lack of knowledge, what's the best practice in the situation is, what is this limit that, uh, that I can, within which I can offer this support. And sometimes there are more severe situations. For, for example, we, uh, we had this um, situation uh, in uh, one of our clients' company that uh, there was a man on, on a sick leave and the manager uh, um, knew about the reason of the sickness, that it was depression, and uh, this employee committed suicide dur during the sick leave. And um, many times people, and especially managers, uh, are left with this with this thought, maybe I could be in touch with this employee. Maybe I could have done something more to, uh, to you know, protect this uh, this employee. So they also stay with this thought, uh, overthinking, and generally this uh, this is just a guilty feeling that they they could have done something more. So usually it comes from lack of knowledge, and it, sometimes it's, uh, com it comes from lack of being self-confident that, okay, I'm sure that I have to do some, some steps, I have to approach someone. And then if there's something really bad happening that people just uh, think that really, I, I could have done something more. Obviously in those situations, those uh, managers would need also uh, psychological su support to, you know, to cope with this guilt. Well, given the choice between the two, overthinking and being insensitive to personal issues employees have, one would certainly go for overthinking, I would imagine, which has its uh, downsides as well. So let me ask you, let's, let's, let's explore it a little further. We are talking about psychological crises that employees have or mental crises that employees have. Um, if you if you look at it through through the perspective of your your mental health center experience and the types of crises uh, you're dealing with, how would you prioritize them? What are the most common types? The what where are the biggest waves, so to say? The most common problem that people uh, face in terms of uh, mental uh, crises is depression and anxiety. And it, it's even 25-30% of people currently who may have some kind of mood disorders and anxiety problems. So th this is most common. Uh, are, are you talking 25-30% out of the total? Because that would be incredibly high. What's the reference here? Incredibly high, you know, because uh, uh, before pandemic, it, it was obvious that about 10% of people may have depression and additionally about 10, but there were also some prognosis that even 20% of people may cope with anxiety disorder. There are, you know, you know, variety of those anxiety disorders. But now pandemic as a additional type of crisis, it's called a catastrophe of uncertainty, uh, caused uh, additional problems among people. Yeah? So, uh, so to those numbers that we had before pandemic, we need to add those people who were triggered by pandemic. So really those, those numbers are between 20 and 30%. So here we talk about uh, the disorders, yeah? but uh, if we add to those uh, tragic situations, crisis situations from, from private life, like for example, a family member that is uh, severely ill or uh, financial problems or grief uh, or big changes in life due to changing job or losing job or losing flood in a fire or etc. So just incidents that may happen to, to many of us, we would need to add even 
you know, we would have to double those numbers. Yeah. So really many people may, may have, you know, just uh, fatal incidents in life and they also can lead to crisis. Yeah. So when I say that it's 30%, I'm not over um, um, estimating this, uh, this problem. Yeah. So we may say that currently it's sure that 30% uh, of our employees may face some troubles. So if we also this is a add huge that, number, Again. yeah, it's a huge and uh, when people use the term uh, like crisis, psychological crisis, they generally think about many situations that lead to drop in uh, uh, in functioning on every day. Yeah? So they even they use this term when they talk about chronic stress. So if we also uh, include those people in chronic stress to those numbers. So, so nowadays it would be 60, 70% of people. It doesn't mean that all of them need uh, psychological support because in, uh, in, um, in companies, especially those companies who are our clients, there will be a lot of people who are so-called highly functioning. Even people in depression, none of them will have very extreme symptoms. Yeah, they will have mild symptoms of depression and anxiety. So they may still cope well with uh, everyday activities Activities with uh, everyday duties, so we will have highly functioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you're saying is that uh, not only top management, but in any team leadership roles, uh, it should be expected at the recruitment level itself that people are more more better tuned, better, more sensitive to signals that they are getting from their colleagues at work. It's not a skill that is usually highlighted in, in job descriptions. But, but my questions or two questions here really is uh, relating to the topic of our conversation. What would help not to over, no, overthink, not to have pangs of conscience, if justified, of course, because in some instances it can be well deserved, actually. And when, uh, how can you detect early signals that mm -hmm. you should be looking for help or support? in dealing with a particular instance? Because I suppose much of the trouble, much of the crisis that you can get, uh, starting from mild depression all the way to the most severe instances where when an employee goes on a sick leave and commits suicide. So so that, that says a lot, doesn't it? So early signals, yes. what are they? You know, How first I will comment on your comments, maybe. Because uh, I think that it would be really too high expectation to check people uh, um, within the scope of competences that are necessary to be a good psychological supporter. Yeah? So we cannot expect that, uh, that from managers on the entrance. But we can develop it, in other words. We yeah, we can learn them after. Yeah, we can uh, even those companies who are kind of engaged in this psychological support systems, they think about onboarding strategy. So if someone is is to take his managerial role, he can be prepared for this. But when it comes to, to signals of or symptoms, what is interesting that if we look at the person in crisis from the outside, whether the person is going through mild depression or divorce or another struggles in private life, they will express that in similar way. Yeah? So they will have lower productivity, they may have lower mood, they may withdraw from social life, they may be you know, la less agitated. O obviously, it depends on the problem. If someone has mania stage, they will be more agitated. So a little bit of knowledge is necessary to, to know that those differences in behavior Behavior. But to my experience, I, I do a lot of training with uh, trainings with managers, and what I'm sure about that people are really quite aware of changes in behavior. So they know that this particular employee behaves in different way than usually. So in fact, they may they I kind of equipped in this knowledge. But the question is, how many symptoms I should, should recognize? Should I wait for all profile of depressive symptom or, or should I approach on early stage? And I suggest to approach whenever change you, you can recognize. Yeah? So if someone feels low and it's not so talkative or uh, today, just ask him, just you look different than today. Is there anything happening? Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. So 
knowing that this is not crossing the limits, that it's just a kind of inv invitation for supportive talk. And um, if you ask employees, you know, many times, uh, is there anything okay or, or is there anything wrong with you, they will adapt to this question. And once, you know, they may be um, eager to, to open up and talk about the problem. So it's about not only knowing the symptoms, but also to be, you know, bold enough to approach the person and, and ask about really small symptoms. For example, if someone is late on every meeting du du during the week, it can mean that someone is in love and he's not sleeping during the night, so he cannot be, you know, aw awakened and ready to, to work from from the from the very morning. But maybe this uh, person is going through some kind of severe stress those situations that also like like you know trauma like a very bad message from uh, from the doctor can also lead to you know lower the quality of sleep so people cannot wake up in the morning yeah so the the same behavior may may mean a lot of things yeah may hide a lot of things so it's it's good to have this habit to to ask people what it's up if you recognize any change in behavior uh, Margarita, tell me, um, we have a, maybe I should start with a question from the audience. Anna is asking, how, uh, how can top, management, uh, top managers build their psychological resilience when they have a lot of pressure coming from taking care of their team as well as a lot of operational tasks and need uh, for strategic planning? Yes, that, that's a good question. And what I would um, say is that Managers, if they if they do recognize a crisis in in employee, they they should provide some support, but everything must be in within the rule. So what I can do as a manager to let this person cope with the private issues and still have this feeling of being a good employee. Yeah, so it, it's within some limits. So it doesn't mean that the manager should, you know, monitor the, the progress of the employee on everyday basis, you know, and be e eager to jump in if something, if someone is in lower mood. It's not about, you know, being so, uh, as much sensitive, yeah? It's good enough if, if the manager starts with just opening question, do you need any support and uh, what can we do? What would fit with your current needs and settle the plan for some, you know, specific time for let's say uh, two weeks or one month and then say okay we will check after this one month what it's uh, what is good whether this support is working maybe you can you know come back to normal uh, uh, schedule and etc so it's not about overthinking about this employee in crisis but to do those checkpoints yeah so this is the first thing second thing is that what i see also or i can recognize that when managers know what can i do how i should approach what questions i can ask uh, the employee and that I'm doing uh, everything what is included in so-called best practices. And I know that I don't have to do much more because this is something that works. I can recognize that the employee Okay. Glad to have you back, Mogozata. <laughs> I'm you also back. glad, you know, I was talking to Frozen uh, picture and I hoped that someone hears me, but I don't know. Well, when sometimes it happens, doesn't it, that yeah. we feel we are talking to someone and we're really talking to ourselves, <laughs> especially in the I online. got used to this, you know, two years of uh, working uh, remotely and doing lectures online, you know, I usually talk to computer, yes, yeah, so... Okay. Tell me more. So... Tell me more. <laughs> Algozata, I'm I'm afraid we need to have a closing sentence and one comment from me and speed up. Okay. Okay. So what I want to say how how managers were can cope with this overthinking and potential guilty feeling if they have this discomfort that I have not done um, uh, everything that I could. First, uh, if we are prepared in terms of competences, if we are after the training, we know how to spot the symptoms. We also can get some additional skills, how to lead the talk, but also knowing what the best practice is. So you cannot figure this out. The brainstorming is not the best option. It's better to know that from professionals, what is the best to do with this uh, specific employee. But on the other hand, the, the easiest way to calm down your, your discomfort 
comfort or this guilty feeling is to ask the employee who is in the crisis whether this support is enough for you so we don't have to consider it and reconsider and you know think before sleep uh, whether i'm doing uh, the good thing the best is if you don't know ask the employee yeah so this is my advice at the end if i have to be very short so much as we want to trust our own skills, there are areas which are simply too sophisticated, too sensitive, and you'd better be careful, otherwise be prepared to take all the risks attached on your shoulders, to put it shortly. Margarita, the only wish I had is I think it's of great value for companies in your current capacity, one of many, which is CEO Mental Health Center, uh, is to share more of those actual trends because I'm, I, I would imagine not all, or certainly not even most companies are alert to the challenges of the new era in the mental health dimension. Let me give you a quick example. Only a week from now, there is a hackathon in Katowice where about 300 IT experts are going to focus on mental health. This is not something that happens at hackathons. They are not this category of, of events. So that alone is symbolic enough. It's a big topic. It's an important topic. And you'd better take stock of what's happening in your own organization. We'll have more opportunities to listen to you, to talk to you during this conference. So for now, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you.